everybody, welcome to the Comic Gamer Movie Show. My name is Deshaun, and today I am here to review Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Now, this is a movie that's in a weird spot because, first of all, financially, it is bombing. Bombing horribly. It bombed this weekend. It was not very good. Um, and it was very unlikely it was going to have a sequel or anything anyways. If Wonder Woman got canceled, you kind of figured this was getting canceled as well. Um, or continuation of this is getting canceled. The director slash the director slash writer on this pretty much said he wasn't coming back. He's like he's like I'm leaving superhero shit behind. Um, Zachary Lee um, with the Rock's character, um, Black Adam character being in disarray, and you know, and all the things around that character. It wasn't really looking good for the Shazam character unless this movie came out and um, succeeded expectations. Like, and and, and the expectations weren't super high, but you know. They were they were small, honestly, and it even it didn't meet even meet those expectations. So Shazam is a weird movie, and um, I love the original Shazam. I thought the first Shazam, outside of the villain, everything about that movie was awesome. I loved everything about it. I loved its its humor. It didn't take itself so seriously, and at the time, DC was putting out so many projects that just took itself so fucking serious and didn't have a light bone in its body. And it was cool, and Shazam came out and breathed. It was something fresh to me in the DC universe. I didn't even know they could have fun. I thought DC was the no-fun zone. And then Shazam came out, and it had sparks of Homecoming in it. It had sparks of Spider-Man Homecoming in the sense that, like, there is a kid, you know, a kid with superpowers. And what comes from that, and the Shazam character is inherently a cool cool concept anyways, especially for children, especially for me when I was a kid, the idea that you could be a kid and um, you just say that magic word Shazam and you could become a superhero like Superman and you as a child can be a superhero. It's an awesome idea. It's an awesome concept. It's an awesome idea. And it's a fun concept. And it worked in the movie. Like I said, um, I had my issues with that first movie, mainly being the villain. But other than that, Zachary Levi did an amazing job. He was fun. The side characters were fun. Um, I liked the dynamic of his family. It was fun. So I, I was obviously, I was looking forward to a sequel. Now, granted, I have mixed feelings because of Black Adam. I was hoping that The Rock was going to be in this sequel. I thought The Rock simply being in it would raise its value up a bit. And I thought, like, I had all kinds of ideas of how that sequel was going to be. Then you see trailers for it, and it's called The Fury of the Gods. And you're like, okay, but it's not really The Fury of the Gods. It's mostly, base. it's basically The Fury of three, go three and a half god goddesses. Is It's The Fury of some god... Some god daughters, the daughter daughters of Atlas, which is like, okay, this isn't really Fury of the Gods. This is like, like, now nah, it would have been badass. Like, when I heard the title Fury of the Gods, I'm thinking like, Zeus and all these gods are gonna like rise up and they were gonna have to literally fight all the gods and like the, 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 um, the Shazam family or the. Yeah, the Shazam family or the Marvel family, whatever you want to call them, would have had to fight all the gods. But no, they were just fighting three old ladies. <laughs> they were just fighting three old ladies. And like, to be fair, I, okay, I'll give this movie, I'll start with the positives about this movie. First of all, Zachary Levi is once again amazing as Billy Batson, a.k.a. Shazam. He is great. He is just as funny as he was in the first one. He is just as charming. He plays this role. Whenever I see him on screen, he plays this role a lot like Tom Holland plays Spider-Man, where there is this joy to him. There is this genuine, fun, free vibe to him. It doesn't feel like he's bullshitting. It feels like some, an actor who is having fun playing his role and having fun being loose in a kid. And it, it's very and it's very Tom Holland, Spider-Man to me, and he nails it every time. The family dynamic is also good. Also, he actually has a great story arc. He, him and Freddy actually have pretty good story arcs. Like, actual, genuinely good story arcs, especially Billy's. And I want to spoil it for you in case you see the movie, which considering how much it's making and a lot of people are seeing it, but still. Um, he has a great emotional story arc, and it... And, Minor spoiler, it picks up on um, how his family um, issues were resolved in the first movie, which was one of the heart most heartbreaking scenes I've ever seen in a comic book movie, was that whole thing with his mother. Like, that was too real. That was real real. 
Batman's parents getting shot in an alley being a rich guy, that's sad. But boo-hoo, you got a billion dollars to cry into. Have you ever had your biological mom stare you in the face and tell you to go away and I left you at a park because I didn't want you? Now that's some next level heart. That's some shit right there. But, so, that shit affected him. It still bothers him and he's working through some shit in the movie that makes logical sense. Billy's story um, and the character itself completely worked from the beginning to end of the movie. Everything about him worked, which... It's a large part, which makes the movie, for the most part, work because he's the main protagonist. Now, the villains are a bit better. I think the Daughters of Atlas are a bit better than who have, I don't even remember the villain's name in the original movie. But I think they work a bit better. They're still a bit moo-ha-ha, -ha, but at least they have a reason. Sure, it's a shallow reason, but it's a reason. And all the sisters are very distinct from each other. They're not just sister number one. Now, I don't remember any of their names. But they are distinct from each other in terms of their visual stylings and their attitudes. So, I'll give them kudos for that. They were serviceable villains. To me, they were like on the same level of like Ronin in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Um, where it's like, you are here. You serve your purpose. You're not anything better than what you are. But you serve the purpose of what the movie is trying to tell. Problem with the movie is there are certain plot points that are, it's extremely predictable. There are certain plot points that seem like they were setting up other things that we know aren't going to happen. Um, not all the family dynamics work, though it is still fun. It doesn't all quite work, particularly the plot itself. The plot itself is a bit much. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Like, I don't want to get into the nitty-gritty details, but there's holes all over this fucking movie. Just watching it the one time, I was like, dude, that doesn't make sense, that doesn't make sense, that doesn't make sense, that doesn't make sense. And like I say, it's a very predictable movie. Like, you kind of know what's going to happen. Outside of one or two things, you kind of get the vibe of what's going to happen. You know where this is all heading. It's not, it's not reinventing the wheel, which I don't you know, usually mark movies down for, but, you know, it's worth pointing out that it's, if you're looking for something, the most inventive superhero movie, it ain't that either. Also, the CGI, um, is touch and go. Sometimes it looks good, other times it's okay. Uh, also, the power, the power sets are just all over the place. Some, the inconsistencies with how powers are used or when powers are used. I mean, straight up, certain characters get hit and you're just like, get hit with something you're just like really um and not all the jokes work though most of them are funny i think i laugh a, I, laugh, I giggled a, a few times but some of it is a bit like okay that didn't work but a lot of them do work but so the movie itself is i don't think it's as good as the original shazam but, but i don't but that's only because the original shazam was such a surprise with what it did the humor the demeanor of it the fun of it like, like, there was something very unique and very... It just catch, caught you off guard. It was like the original Deadpool to me, the, the first Shazam. Like, I think Deadpool 2 is a good movie. I like Deadpool 2, but I don't like Deadpool 2 as much as I like the first Deadpool. I think the first Deadpool is a superior movie than the original Deadpool. And clearly people agree with me that the Shazam 2 is not as good as Shazam 1. Shazam 1's a 90 fucking 2. Shazam 2 is like a 55 or something, something like that. So... Which I don't think it's that low. If I was Rotten Tomato, I do think it's below Shazam 1. I think Shazam 1, like, Shazam 2 just piggybacked off everything Shazam 1 did. Everything that works about Shazam 2 works better in Shazam 1. So, but things still work in this movie. I would probably end up giving this 7 out of 10. Solid 7 out of 10. I enjoyed Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Like I said, it, it was a bit disappointing. There are something that happens at the end, very end of the movie that really I did not like at all with a particular character. And in the end, it all does also feel a bit hollow for me because I already know none of this is going anywhere. I know none of this is going anywhere. I know all this setup that they're doing is really for nothing. And at the end of the day, it did, it like, when I walked out of the theater, like, I wasn't satisfied enough to, obi I could, the movie I saw wasn't so good that I could pretend like I don't know. Well, in all honesty, this ain't going anywhere, so it's a waste of my time. But I still enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed Zachary Levi. The villains were slightly better, but not that much better. They were serviceable. 
Um, the family dynamics is still fun, though certain things don't work. The plot is a bit much, and there are holes all over the place. I mean, from day one. But I had enough fun with this movie that I'm still willing to give it a 7 out of 10. Anyways, thank you guys for joining the Comic Game Movie Show. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one.